Want a healthy metabolism? Stop dieting. You want to understand how to finally lose weight without damaging your metabolism. You are going to want to stick around for this video. Maybe you've heard the news that diets are killing your metabolism. In case you haven't, stick around because we're going to talk about the three tips for losing fat without damaging your metabolism, which is part of pillar number two of the diet rebel method. Now, what most struggling diet addicts do when they want to lose weight is restrict calories, which means they could be slashing their calories, slashing their carbs, fasting, whatever the case may be, or they add in a lot of cardio-based workouts. So whether it's actually cardio machines, doing cardio classes at the gym or on demand, doing lots of circuits, things like that. And they try to lose as much weight as possible, as fast as possible, which typically leads to regaining all of the weight and also damaging your metabolism to the point that when you're finally ready and have the courage to try again and you're motivated, it takes that much longer to actually lose the weight again the second, third, fourth, fifth time. So if this is something that sounds good to you, then make sure that you also subscribe and hit the bell to be notified because I'm coming to you every single Thursday with tips on how to keep your metabolism high as you age and how to lose fat permanently without doing this whole yo-yo dieting thing that most of us have done for 20 years or more at this point. So three tips for making sure that you lose fat permanently and don't damage your metabolism Number one is to make sure that you are eating enough. I know, sounds oxymoronic, right? But with a name like Eat More, Weigh Less, you had to see it coming. So under eating is the number one reason why so many women are experiencing metabolic slowdown as they age. If you haven't already checked out my video on does metabolism have to decline with age, make sure you check that out after you finish watching this because it doesn't spoiler alert eating too little causes your body to adapt to the amount of food that you're eating so that's the wonderful thing about our metabolism but it's also the sucky thing when it comes to dieting whatever amount of food that you're eating your metabolism is going to go up or down to meet that need so if you're eating too much your metabolism gets the hint speeds up a little bit to try to digest more food but when you eat too little which is what most diets would have you do your metabolism slows down because there's not that much work to do so when somebody lowers their calories, be it intermittent fasting or eating low calories or having a very low amount of points or whatever the case may be, when you're under eating, you're not giving your metabolism very much work to do. So it's going to drop down and it's going to meet this need, which means that even though it seems like it's working at first when you lower your calories, after a while, because your metabolism is doing much less work, what happens is that what was once a deficit actually becomes maintenance. So your body starts to maintain at that new low number, which means it's no longer losing anything. So you can see how that would be a problem when it comes down to not hurting your metabolism because you're actually just lowered it by eating too little and staying there for a sustained amount of time. So even though eating a lot of food would seemingly be counterproductive when it comes to losing weight. The key is that you have a maintenance level calorie and you just eat slightly below that to make sure that you're losing fat, not just weight, which is a whole nother conversation in and of itself, but you wanna make sure that you're actually losing fat. And when you're staying a little bit closer to maintenance, that means that your metabolism is also staying a little bit closer to maintenance. So that little deficit that you have there can actually work. And not only that, but if you take breaks every three weeks, four weeks, six weeks or so, and take your calories back up to maintenance to just remind your body of what it is, it can continue to see the lower amount of calories as a deficit. Because that's the biggest key here is that if you don't ever eat at maintenance level calories, your body doesn't know maintenance level calories are. Therefore, it cannot respond to anything below maintenance because it's going to think that maintenance is whatever you're eating all the time. 
So the key takeaway there is to make sure that you're always eating enough calories when it comes to your weight loss and not spending so much time eating less that your body has time to adapt to it. So your weight loss phases should be quick and easy, or you should at least, if you have a longer journey, they should have breaks in between to make sure that you're taking your calories back up to maintenance. The other key there is to make sure that you're eating the right type of calories, which is your macronutrients. So two important things that I would say when it comes to the types of calories that you're eating is making sure that you're getting enough protein, which is a macronutrient. So make sure you're eating a sufficient amount of protein and enough fiber, which is a micronutrient. And basically these are the two that I'm going to always point out to that's actually four, but these are the two that I'm always going to point out because of the fact that those are both what we call thermogenic foods, which means your body burns calories just in digesting them. So you're going to want lots of those in your diet. Does that mean that you can't have carbs and fat, which are the other macronutrients? No, it does not because fiber is actually carb based. So if you're removing all carbs from your diet, then you could be missing out on that essential fiber element. So you want to make sure that you're getting in both of those, getting in enough protein, and then making sure that out of those carbs that you're getting in, that you're also bringing in enough fiber along the way. Now, number two way that you can make sure that you're losing fat and not damaging your metabolism is to lift weights. Now, this actually goes hand in hand with number one, because of the fact that when you're not eating enough for fat loss, then typically your body, especially if you're not eating enough protein, your body takes the protein that it needs from your muscles. So your body starts to catabolize your muscle tissue. When your body catabolizes your muscle tissue, this lowers your metabolism because your metabolism is largely based on how much muscle mass that you have. So if you're not eating enough food and you're not eating enough protein, you're telling your body, hey, just take whatever you need from my muscles. Now, to add to that, if you're also not lifting weights, you've just given your body the double whammy introduction to, hey, take all the muscles that you need because nothing that you are doing are sending these signals to your body that you want to keep the muscles. So eating enough food, eating enough protein, and then lifting weights are both sending direct signals to your body to keep that muscle mass or build more, especially if you're doing both of those things when you're not in a weight loss phase because then you're actually going to be able to build muscle. So although the fitness industry does have some myths like high reps to tone and th things like that, it's important to understand that you can't tone or define something that doesn't exist. You can't tone or define something that doesn't exist. So if you've never taken the time to actually put on some muscle mass, then just going high reps, cardio and things like that, and thinking you're going to get super ripped or cut or whatever, and you're going to define all these muscles can't really happen because the muscles have never been built. But if you are at least trying to preserve what is there by lifting weights, that is at least going to help you to keep your metabolism where it is in that moment. If you want to increase your metabolism, bonus points, go through some muscle building phases. But the most important thing to understand when it comes to lifting weights, because we're trying to send that signal to your body to build or keep muscle, you want to stay around muscle building territory when it comes to lifting weights. This means around the eight to 12 rep range. So if you're lifting a weight that you could just go on and on and on for 25, 30 reps with, that's going to push you more into an endurance or cardiovascular territory. When you're doing endurance style workouts, you are sending the signal to your body to get better at endurance style workouts. You're telling your body to increase your endurance. You're not necessarily telling it to build muscle. So that is the caveat to when we talk about lifting weights is you do want to lift weights in a way that signals muscle building, even when you aren't necessarily in a muscle building phase, because of the fact that it will at least tell your body, Hey, this muscle is really important. Let's keep it around a little bit. So sticking around that eight to 12 rep range is going to help you to preserve that muscle mass. Now you can still go above and below that rep range because that's called periodization. And that's something that's vitally important to building muscle is spending periods of time in other rep ranges. The most important thing is to understand that you're still basing those around that muscle building phase. If that's something that is important to you. So when you're lifting in a strategically 
periodized manner and you have this eight to 12 rep as your base and you're going above and below that in other phases, that means every time you come back to that eight to 12 rep range, your body is getting those signals all over again. Because remember the same way that we talked about your body adapting to you raising and lowering calories, it's also gonna adapt to your workout. So if you're doing the same workout over and over and over, your body is gonna adapt to that. So periodization is going to help you to make sure that your body continues to respond to that muscle building rep range the way that you want it to. So the most important thing when it comes to lifting weights is to make sure that you're doing it with the intent of building or maintaining muscle, which means accepting the fact that not every single workout that uses a dumbbell is actually strength training, is actually in that muscle building territory. So just something to keep in mind. If you want to do your lighter reps for more of a cardio type thing, and then you want to do a little bit heavier weights and getting into that eight to 12 rep range for your muscle building territory, it's fine to go back and forth between the two, but just understand that each serves a different purpose, which brings me to number three. And that is to give yourself enough time. So when we talk about all of these different phases of the journey, it's important to know that they all come together for the greater good. So there are phases of muscle building where you're not actually focused on losing weight or losing fat. And there are phases of losing fat where you're accepting whatever amount of muscle mass you have and just trying to keep as much of it as you can there. So Going between these phases is what actually makes this all come together, but that also means that it takes some time. So when we just are looking at fat loss phases all the time, which typically we're thinking more along weight loss territory, we're just thinking about how fast can we get this done and how much weight can we lose in the smallest amount of time. Doing that also causes that metabolic damage that we talked about, because typically if you're losing weight at a speed faster than about one to two pounds per week, one for women, closer to two for men, then typically you're starting to tip into muscle loss territory. And we don't want to go there. We don't want to lose muscle. So keeping your weekly weight loss at one pound or less for women is actually going to help you to lose weight at a nice moderate pace, which not only allows for your metabolism to stay nice and high because you're not sacrificing muscle, it also allows for your skin elasticity to adjust and shift with you as you go. So one of the biggest ways to think about that as far as skin elasticity is when you consider when a woman is pregnant, her body has nine months to slowly expand span to create the space for this baby to be inside. But once she has the baby, that part is instantaneous. That instant loss of what was underneath that skin can often cause some skin sagging and it takes a while for that skin to bounce back if it ever does for a lot of people. So when you're losing weight at a slower pace, it actually takes that into consideration and gives your skin a little bit more time to catch up. Typically, if you have a lot of weight to lose, some excess skin might be unavoidable, but this is a way for you to actually combat it by going slower and giving your skin some time to catch up versus being so focused on how quick can I get this off that you're not thinking about the repercussions. If that's something that's a repercussion to you, there's nothing wrong with a little extra skin. Lots of us have it. It's a normal part of life, especially when you're losing and gaining weight and are having babies. So it's just that when you're having a baby, that's a little bit uncontrollable. You can't have the baby slowly, but when you're losing weight, you can do that slowly. You are 100% in control. So it gives your skin a little bit more time to catch up, but it also signals to your body. Once again, we want to keep this muscle. And that is the thing that you will see in common with all three of these tips is the biggest key to making sure that you keep your metabolism high while you're losing fat is to make sure that you are actually maintaining as much muscle mass as possible during the fat loss phase, but also building as much muscle mass as possible when you're not in the fat loss phase, because you shouldn't always be in a fat loss phase. The fat loss phase becomes, as we talked about number one, it becomes less and less effective the longer that you stay in it. What makes the fat loss phases so effective is taking time away from them. So make sure that you're giving yourself enough time on this journey. And like I said, if you're shooting for that one pound or less 
per week of weight loss. That means that attempting to do a 21 day, 30 day or 12 week program when you have more than, you know, three, four, 12 pounds to lose respectively, then you want to make sure that anything more than that is probably moving too fast and is probably going to sacrifice some muscle. And if permanent fat loss is important to you, then maintaining as much muscle mass and nurturing that muscle mass and giving your body all the signals that muscle is important to me should be your number one goal. If that was useful to you, make sure that you share this, share it with a friend who maybe is on this fat loss journey with you. Subscribe to be notified every time I come live with more of these topics and make sure that you leave me a comment if there's something that you want to know a little bit more about or if any part of this actually left you more confused. And make sure you also check out my free masterclass on the five reasons why it's harder for women to lose weight and what you can do about it. All right, guys, see you next Thursday.